there's anybody here. Yes, sir. Yeah, you're ready, aren't you? I'm ready, let's go. <laughs> See, I was just sitting there thinking, the people who come to this church want to be here. And I love that, that you're ready for action. We're going to open up Doxology, number 815 in our hymn book. And if there's anybody that would like to come forward to stand with me, or you can all stand together like Craig. Number 815. George, would you give us a pitch, please? Big G. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Beautiful voices. We're going to turn back, if you would, number 329. We filled your power in the blood. And we're just going to sing the first and last, verse 24. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would your evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. I'm going to turn back to number 219. I love this song. It's called, Surely the Presence of the Lord is in this place. And just sing that one verse. So this morning, let's sing it twice. That's right. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. Jesus. Amen. We got it. Bunch 
I've been empty for a while. I'm a hugger handshake. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Robert. Thank you, Bob, Ted, the sorted others. Good to see everybody. Well, you know who you are. I wouldn't call you ladies and gentlemen, but you know what you are. Well, before we get out before we have communion and uh, just uh, something I remembered the other day that uh, 51 years ago on October 29th, that's what today is, October 29th, 1972, the church at Athens had their very first church meeting. So 51 years ago, Today marks that first meeting. So, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. And we thank all those that came before us and founded this church. And if they're not here with us, we, we miss them dearly. So, uh, we'll never forget them. Before we have communion this morning, I'm going to read from the book of John. In John chapter 3, and I think that most of you know these verses that I'm going to read, verses 16 and 17 from John chapter 3. Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Amen. represents the body of Christ. Remember him as we eat together. This drink represents the blood that Jesus shed for the sins of the world. Remember him as we drink together. Before we take up our offering, I'd like to read from the book of First John. <clears throat> from 1 John chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in Him. Amen. Hear my prayer, O Lord. 
Listen to my cry for mercy. In the day of my trouble, I will call to you, for you will answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, O Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Amen. Beautiful words. Well, again, thank you for being here this morning. And it is that time of year when the little creatures, many of them are trying to find a place to ride out the winter. So we have a number of ladybugs and gentlemen bugs that needed attended to <laughs> over the weekend and this morning as well. So if you do see one, just let the little creatures move on until maybe they expire. If they're moving, I don't like to bother them. If it's a fly, that's a different matter. <laughs> I don't know why that is, why we distinguish one little living creature from another. What's so wrong with a fly? Maybe they're just not as cute as the little ladybugs and gentlemen bugs. But we love them, and they have their purpose in life as well. When we didn't have a joke of the day, but I did put a little something in your bulletin that goes along with the article that's right above it. So I hope you will appreciate that uh, little cartoon there. That uh, in the article above it talks about a sense of humor, and we know religion is a serious matter, <clears throat> most definitely. But as it says here, some of God's most dedicated servants have been lively, happy people. And it goes on to say that one of the most beautiful things we read about Jesus is that ordinary people enjoyed listening to him, and children were at ease in his presence. This would not have been true had he been constantly gloomy. Hmm. Wouldn't it be nice to hear Jesus tell a humorous <clears throat> story? We have things in the Bible that we know he used everyday examples to tell stories, but wouldn't it have been something? And one day we'll get a chance to do that when we're all gathered and Jesus is telling us a story. Would that be a beautiful day? And I hope that I'm there with all of you listening to that story. Now sometimes we wonder if all our efforts are making any difference. Do our efforts make any difference at all? And sometimes we can get discouraged thinking that our acts of kindness, compassion, are insignificant. In Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, Paul wrote this. Paul said, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. That's Galatians 6, verses 9 and 10. And we know that Jesus said we are to love our neighbor. And Jesus taught, it is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. So the truth is, we are all in need of help in some way. And when we see someone in need, we are to show compassion and kindness to that person. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 40, Jesus said, I'll tell you the truth. Whatever you did 
For one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. So we are to watch out for our brothers and sisters that are in need. And in that story from Matthew chapter 25, they asked Jesus, well, when did we do an act of kindness for you, Jesus? And then that's when he tells them, whatever you do for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. And there's a reward for that. Now, not too long back, we talked about how Jesus fed the thousands of people with those little loaves of bread, those two sardines. And we said that just a little bit, when we place it in the hands of Jesus, becomes much, doesn't it? As that story shows us. Feeding thousands of people with a little boy's or little girl's lunch, if you want to call it that. The Lord is able to take the small acts of love, the small acts of faith, and then the Lord multiplies them just as he did with the bread and the fish. Jesus said, and this is from Matthew 17, Jesus said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. So we should not underestimate the power of a little act. Bob often says, give someone a hug, maybe a smile, maybe a touch when you leave here today, because it might be the only one that they get. He says that on a regular basis. It's the small acts of love and kindness that will lift someone up when they need it. In Luke 16, verse 10, Jesus said, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. People who fail to be trustworthy in showing love, in showing kindness, in showing service, in those little opportunities will not be given greater responsibilities in the future. Whoever does well with the little time that they have, the few talents that they might have, or the few resources that they have, those people, when they use them for others, will be entrusted with more. The person who hides what talent they have or hides their abilities, they're never going to be given more and will become stagnant. And we know the old saying, use it or lose it. So if Jesus gives us talent, time, we are to use that for the good of others. And if we don't do that, we will not be given more. Why would we be entrusted with more if we don't use what we have? In Mark chapter 4, verses 30 through 32, Jesus said, The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. A tiny seed. A tiny mustard seed. When that seed is planted... It grows and becomes the largest of all the garden plants from that tiny seed, the largest of the garden plants. So we are to plant those seeds, those seeds of kindness, plant the seeds of love wherever we go. Psalm 126, verse 6 says, He who goes out carrying seed to sow will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with him. 
And we know that the Bible teaches that one person plants, another person waters, and God then will bring the harvest. Nature is God. The Declaration of Independence says that. Nature's God takes the small, seemingly insignificant people of the world and uses those seemingly insignificant people in a mighty way. We've seen that over and over again. That person that is seemingly insignificant that goes on to do great things in the name of the Lord. In Luke chapter 21, verses 1 through 4, Jesus said of that widow, if you remember, that gave a small two copper coin offering. And Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave gifts out of their wealth. But she has, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. What an act. And as we just said, the Lord will multiply every gift that we give for the good of others. He will multiply. We might not see the results immediately of something that we've done. But that is what multiplication does, isn't it? This times this times this times this. This person to this person to these people to these people. And the end result is a huge number. It may have started off very small. But eventually that number becomes huge, doesn't it? Multiplication. That's what the Lord does. God knows who can best serve His purpose. All of us. He knows that. God knows who can serve His purpose. Those that want to. He doesn't care what we look like. He doesn't care how much money we have. Again, that example of the poor widow with these two small copper coins that she gave all she had. So, we shouldn't overlook anyone because of what they look like, because of maybe what religion they worship, what gender they are, what culture they come from. God knows who He can use in this world. It's not exclusive to a little club, is it? There is no little club. There is no little club at Athens. It's the church at Athens. And the church at Athens is not just this little church at Athens that we th sometimes think about this particular piece of land, but the church in the broad view. We are part of the church. We're part of God's plan. So we have to ask ourselves, how can we help a person, just that one person, today? How can we do that? Maybe with money. Maybe we can help that one person we're giving them something to eat. Maybe we can help that one person by, as Bob says, just with a smile, we acknowledge that person that might be down on their luck today. Jesus said, I'll tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine. You did for me. We're going to have an invitation hymn today. And we should always remember that love and compassion never goes out of style, does it? It is never not stylish. It is never not correct. Love and kindness is something that we can all share with anyone. Well, our invitation to him this morning is number 343. It's called Amazing Grace. We're just going to sing that first verse, if you would. And let's stand together. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. 
second verse. It's a beautiful song, isn't it? Beautiful song. Thank you for being here today. And just what that song said, grace is amazing. We should never take it for granted. We are all so blessed by the great Creator. And since we are so blessed, let us share the blessings and the love that we have with those people that are so in need. Our closing hymn this morning will be number 406. It's called Wonderful Words of Life. Before we sing that great song, join me in a closing prayer. <clears throat> Father, we thank you again for allowing us to be here. We thank you for the words that Roger brought. They are so true. There's so many people in the world that need us, need your help. Give us the strength, give us the knowledge to do your will. For in the name of Jesus we all pray. Amen. Amen. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful 